All right, welcome everybody. I've got a quick tutorial for you. Just give you an update. Chat GPT-4 has something called DALI or DALI, DALI, whatever you want to call it. I actually pay for the uh, Chat GPT-4, probably too much, but I just was over in Blender and I rem bleh, rendered this thing out real quick. It's kind of a sloppy render, but we're just going to throw it in here. And what I want to do is get ChatGPT to use my exact, I can't type, to get my exact image and create a cool background of some sort. Use this exact image and create, and it's going to do something a little different. It's not going to necessarily use the image perfectly a uh, let's just say post apocalyptic apocalyptic if i can spell that i probably am incorrect background i'm sure i didn't okay and what else do we want to say to this thing it's annoying get that out of there what else do we want to tell it say have Let's see. Helicopters incoming firing at tanks with buildings on fire. That sounds pretty post apocalyptic or apocalyptic, however you want to do it. And we're just going to let it run. It's going to be a very short tutorial. So you guys can go over there and check this thing out because chat GPT four or the, uh, whatever you want to call it, their project, their entire organization has added a ton of new things. And you see it's now processing this. And so just, you know, just a loose render here and you could take any picture you want. And while that's cooking, I'm going to go in here and I want to show you guys a couple of things i had this uh thing i was gonna get for the ex-girlfriend got it for her but then we broke up so it looked something like this only <laughs> it wasn't quite as tough necessarily uh, but i said to put this thing in here standing on a skull with a spiked baseball bat with a poke post-apocalyptic background and zombies and it came up with something really cool and then it ended up making a few other copies. I said, put some baby killer eggs next to it or whatever. And then we get stuff like this. So this was kind of a fun little project. Now let's see what we got here. It's going to just take so much liberty because it, it took the other picture I did and did a great job. So apparently you just need to put something else in there and it will tell you that you cannot use pictures of people at, you know, like real life pictures of people. It, it just won't let you do it. So if I was to throw my face in here and I think I got a picture of me somewhere in my download folder, bear with me, where am I? There's a weird looking picture of me. I'm not going to use that one. Here we go. There's a picture of me next to my motorcycle, and I'm just going to say um, create a giant hallway scene ah, full of motorcycles with my picture and bike in the scene and just hit enter and see if it will take me and throw that in there now that's going to take a second to bake and create something but i think it'll tell you and it did tell me hey we can't use pictures of people's faces all right so it came up with something i paused the bake so you didn't have to see it and apparently that's some other dude i don't think that's me but a hallway full of motorcycles, pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool that it came up with that, and it'll give you a couple of variations 
So this is actually pretty neat. So if you want to just do some quick artwork, you know, and just get something done, you can go in there and boom. Now for the robots, uh, like I had a robot here just loosely rendered out and I was kind of playing with it, but I couldn't necessarily get it to do what I wanted. And I went through here with the robot stuff and instead of this, it made this, but this could be some concept art. And I'm not sure if this is like the stable diffusion AI and all the other stuff that came out that people are like, hey, you're stealing my art. This AI is scouring the internet and making stuff. So I don't know, use this at your own discretion. Now I'm not recommending anybody does it, but if you were to take this as a concept and make it and slightly change it just a little bit, I think that would work nice. And so that is the open AI project. And you can go in there and just grab uh, some of these. I don't know if it's available for free or not, though. Just kind of thinking outside of my own brain here. But what we can do is let's jump over to the Explore GPTs. And now you can do consensus, your AI research assistant, books, code tutor, tutor. And it's like... I won't write your code for you, but it'll help you do it. So whatever, you can figure that out. Then you've got all this data analysis by chat. Um, these are the ones I was using, kind of playing around with the dolly, pretty neat. And then you've got a logo creator and some other stuff. But I'd, like I said, I'd be really careful using the logo stuff on my own things, whatever. Be careful. I'm actually going to still do it, but whatever. Productivity. And you can go through here. Canva is actually part of that. I'm probably going to go into that because I own Canva, a subscription to Canva. And then, all right, so I'm creating my thumbnail for YouTube with the Canva plugin. So this is going to pop out a couple of thumbnails for me because I want to, you know, I want to just make it easy, all right? There's enough stuff going on and I'm not sure I really like these. So I might just find something else. Like I'm just going to play around with this and you have to be very specific with it. All right. So I didn't like that. So I'm just going to plug away and say, Hey, let's make a thumbnail more geared to 3d modeling and AI technology. Enter, run it, pause, be back in a second. Ah, never mind. So here we go. Allow for the plugin because I have a subscription to Canva. So this kind of works good. And I might start doing my thumbnails like this because the, the ones they offer you are just so 1995. I can't do it. Or even worse, 2001, whatever you want to pick. I've created two new thumbnails. Focus, blah, 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 AI, blah, blah, blah. Let's see what it does. How AI and 3D modeling are transforming the future. And it's very rigid. Like I could change that. Mastering 3D modeling and AI technology, a step-by-step -step guide. Yeah, so this is still, I think this thing was made in 1995 or something. But we can work with that and you could actually change the writing to say something. So I would say, make the thumb nail read. Uh, what do I want to say? New chat GPT. What do we call that? New chat GPTs. There we go. For 3D modeling. And YouTube. Sounds good. Doesn't have to be anything special. And I'm going to let it plug back in and do that because that wasn't too bad but it's gonna have to allow it every time maybe i can just let it have access it's gonna hack my bank account probably talking to okay bring it this is fun youtube thumbnail chat blah 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 new chat gpt's for 3d modeling that's not terrible. I kind of like that. Let's see what the other one ends up being. Now that's convoluted. Don't like that. But let's take a look at this one. This is the first one I've seen. Holy cripes. It took me over to 
Canva. I didn't expect that. That was fresh, like 100%. So this is actually going to be the thumbnail that I use. So, I mean, I'm just going to download it. I don't really want to do anything else to it. That's why I'm using ChatGPT. I'm going to make that a JPEG, download it, throw it on there. That's it. Super cool. And then you've got research space, programming, education, lifestyle. And so they've really opened it up. And this is just a recent thing. I didn't see this a month ago. So it must be pretty new. And I stayed off of Chet, GPT, OpenAI, and all that stuff for a month or so just so I could do some add-on creation. But that's it, everybody. Uh, like the video, smash the subscribe. See you guys. Check out my Blender Market. Check out my Patreon. You get add-ons every single month. And also on top of that, like I'll post updates to the... And you can get the damage it. This is just a fun little add-on. I'm not going to do a whole lot here. I promise the tutorial is over. Just throw this in there and you can damage your mesh. And with that selected, you kind of play around with the scale, clean that thing up and do a bunch of different things with it. You kind of damage the sides. And this is going to be one of those things that's technically free if you go in there. Then I've got the cracks add-on, procedural. I've got the hard service toolbox. You can append in like basically anything you can think of, whatever you want to append in objects and or collection and just append all those things in. Plus you've got some mirroring tools, context menu. I got the OCP so you can come in and you could OCP that and turn it into a proxy and no, it's not in there. That's real honest to God proxy. And so if you turn on this, you'll see that the faces are like 2000. And if I cycled this thing off, it's 441,000. So it's a big deal. And then I've got the batch decimate, which will go through the scene and everything that's selected will get decimated. So that just knocked it directly in half. And this has these same controls. So you can do that. And then you can batch decimate. You can batch do that. And if you throw this on here, like I swear, I'm almost done. I'm going to OCP that. Maybe. It's going to let me OCP it. Oh, it's already OCP'd. I'm a dork. Okay, so regardless, what we can do is you can scale that down. And if you've got a bunch of these mech proxies, then you can scale them all with a global transform, if you will, and do that. And then the, you can return them all back to normal size, turn it off, or delete them all. And it'll do everything. You don't even have to have them selected for this one, but for the batch decimate, you do. That's it, guys. See you in the next one.